welcome you all for an overview of Henry James's The Art of Fiction. Henry James. Henry James was an American British author. In the sense, he was an American by birth and British at heart as being raised in France. He was the son of Henry James Sr. and the brother of philosopher and psychologist William James. James has been called the first of the great psychological realists in our time. Honored as one of the greatest artists of the novel, he is also regarded as one of America's most influential critics and literary theorists. Henry James is not only a prolific writer of novels and short stories, but also of biographies, travel writings, memoirs and literary criticism. One can easily notice the clash of the two worlds in his major works, that of Europe and the United States. With this juxtaposition of a clash of culture, region, temperament, personalities can also be traced in his writings. Making psychological realism as his strong point, James evolved as a writer who explored the psyche of his characters in depth. Producing a large body of work revolving around these characteristics, James is considered one of the most eminent contributors to American fiction. Some of his notable works include Daisy Miller, published in the year 1878, The Portrait of a Lady, published in the year 1881, the Turning of the Screw, published in the year 1898, The Wings of the Dove, published in the year 1902, and The Ambassadors, published in the year 1903. The Essay, The Art of Fiction The Art of Fiction is a critical essay by Henry James, published in 1884 in Longman's Magazine. The essay was written as a reply to fiction as one of the fine arts, a lecture delivered by Walter Besant, a Victorian novelist and historian. James came across the essay when it was published later that same year as The Art of Fiction and he adapted the same title for his response, published in Longman's Magazine in September 1884. The essay created enough of a disturbance to draw out additional commands on the discussion, including one from Robert Louis Stevenson, which led to a strong friendship between Stevenson and James. Stevenson is a 19th century Scottish novelist who is best known for the classic novel The Treasure Island. The following year, Besson's and James's articles were published together as a book. The essay reminds one of the most influential statements on the theory of the novel. James establishes the novel as a serious artistic genre, identifies its unique characteristics, and lays out the fundamental principles for its critical analysis. The essay is a manifesto of literary realism and condemns novels which are saturated with sentimentality or pessimism. James offers in his essay various new aspects that a novelist should be aware of and make use of if he wants to write a realistic and true novel. No doubt, the essay stands as the most concise and durable general statement of James's philosophy of literature. Written as a response to Walter Besson's lecture, James sometimes agrees as well as disagrees with some points put forwarded by him. Besson's original essay presents three main arguments and James agrees with these three points. First, narrative fiction is a fine art in its own right, so it should be valued with the arts of painting, sculpture, music and poetry. That is, fiction is an art in every way and worthy to be called the sister and the equal arts of painting, sculpture, music and poetry. Second, novel is governed and directed by general laws. And these laws, that, precision and exactness. Third, mastering these rules is necessary but not sufficient for success. James's appreciation of Besant's arguments. James agrees with Besant on fiction's participation in the fine arts and introduces new ideas that he deeply believes in. James strongly agrees with Besant's first proposition that fiction is a fine art. Here, Henry James agrees with Besant about the high degree of artistic ability that the novelist must have powerful artistic talent. 
According to James, natural talent is required to excel in writing fiction. The rules are fine to guide but cannot replace natural talent. James's objection on Bizant's arguments. James diplomatically admits that most of Bizant's principles are on the surface impossible to disagree with. He gathers his various objections together under one main criticism of Bizant's approach. James doubts the existence of general rules or laws for making a novel. For James, Bizant is mistaken in his attempt to develop precise criteria for what makes a good novel. James also rejects Bizant's notion of writing from experience. According to James, even though one should write from experience, one cannot restrict to write their own perspective. For James, writers are free to make use of imagination as they feel as perfect to the literary piece. James believed that experience is never limited and it is never complete also. For James, experience is much more complicated and it is the product of highly individual artistic sensibility. James also disagrees with the point that fiction must have a conscious moral purpose and the experience and observation overweigh imagination as creative tools. When Bizant argues that the story of the fiction must have a moral principle, James states that the story should be interesting rather than being moralistic. However, James also agrees with Bizant that a true artist cannot make an interesting story without imbibing morals into it. Regarding characters, Bizant says that characters should be clearly illustrated. But for James, characters should be understandable and relevant. There are innumerable ways to describe a character that will make them acceptable and relatable to the reader. For James, there are no such restrictions to create characters by using one's own imagination. James argues against these restrictive rules for writing fiction and responds that no good novel will ever proceed from a superficial mind. That is, for James, novel is not an inferior literary form and must have a serious critical analysis. James draws parallels between the art of painting and the art of writing. He also concludes with two reasons why fiction does not need to apologize for its attempt to represent life. James criticizes colleagues like Anthony Trollope for still apologizing and calls this behavior a terrible crime. For James, the novelist is a historian and history is allowed to represent life. According to James, a good novel is good because it is interesting. For him, a good novel has to represent life. It has to have the order of reality. James further states that the story and the novel are like needle and thread. He says that there is no part of the novel without the story. Thus, in James's view, the only purpose of the novel is to represent life. According to James, a writer can fail or succeed depending on certain qualities. He also compares the consciousness of the gifted novelist to a huge spider web of fine silken threads hanging in the chamber of consciousness. It also catches all flying impression in its tissue. Just like a spider, a writer imagines and catches all flying thoughts into his forum. James next gives importance to the subject of a novel and demands artists to choose the richest subjects of all. James's next claim is that the novelist and the novel must be free. For James, novelistic freedom entails a liberation from moral and educational requirements. Writers are to create art rather than obeying rules. For James, a set of rules can remove the art from the story. A writer should worry less about following rules and more about creating art. James suggests that writers do what feels, looks and sounds real rather than what feels, looks or sounds right. Thus, in the essay The Art of Fiction, James decisively comments upon the nature of the true art and the role of a true artist. Here in the essay, James is concerned to establish the novel as a serious art form rather than as merely an amusing or escapist pastime. James concludes his essay by expressing an advice to young novelists. For James, young novelists 
should be true to their own artistic vision and reject public opinion and critical principles. James closes the essay by encouraging writers to stay true to themselves and their vision. Therefore, an artist, a real true artist, must open to discussion, relish experiment, stand upon curiosity, attempt a variety of techniques and forms, and willing to embrace open exchange and comparison. Thank you.